Hello and welcome back to the Sacred Light Collective podcast. You are with Ali and thank you for joining me for another episode. What a week it's been, not just uh, from my own personal perspective, but the cosmic energies. There has been so much happening and it's one of my favorite times of year. I have always had a special affinity for the Lionsgate portal energy or this time of year, even before I even really understood what that that meant. Um, But I have really felt the intensity of the energies really beginning from the 777 portal, which was the 7th of July, 777 being because 2023 uh, also is a year a number of seven. So it created this this really powerful frequency of, of 777, which uh, has a lot of connection to our spirituality, our spiritual journey, our embodiment, all of the things that you know I love <laughs> here, um, really embodying uh, the balance of being a spirit and a human. So that had an extra special significance for me personally. But we've seen um, on July 25th that it is known as a day out of time. And this is something that I have just learned about this year. I'm really starting to become more interested in the astrological connections and trying to really um, learn a bit more about that so that I can be a bit more present with that. So as I'm speaking into this now, I am definitely no expert. I am just picking up uh, what I what I read and what I receive and what comes into into my sphere, but that was really interesting because my understanding of the day out of time is a day of almost nothing, a day of pause and pre stepping into what is the new cosmic year, and from what I've read, it speaks into the Earth realigning with galactic time, and then stepping into July twenty six, which is the mark or the first day of the galactic year, the new galactic year. Again, a new term that I haven't heard before this year. So this is another opportunity to open to a a new frequency on the planet to receive like an influx of energies. And while we've been receiving an influx of energies anyway with this with this mark of time between the 777 and moving into the Lionsgate, which I think is officially the um, 8th of August. But obviously with these sort of um, energies, it's usually a day or two before and and after. It, It is a bit of a window. So I don't know about you, but I've definitely been feeling this influx of energies, of cosmic energies, and the the opportunity to to actually start to step into some of the new to make some change to let go of the old and and to really what feels present right now is to really let go of some of the old lingering patterns some of the things that I'm really ready to step out of and leave some of that fear behind and I've been pushing the boundaries of my own comfort zone probably over the last three years, but in this last six months of 2023, I've really, I've really pushed the edges of my comfort zone and it feels like it's time to actually step through that and to push that comfort zone out a little bit more. And that's here for you too. You know, you may not feel like as you're listening to me now, you may not feel feel like you connect to the the influx of energies you may not necessarily notice anything out of the ordinary but are you feeling tired are you is your body exhausted are you being triggered are there patterns that are coming up old patterns that are appearing or pain points that you haven't felt for a while but they're dragging something up from a long time ago these are all signs that the, the energies are coming into your life and are offering you this opportunity to bring it into your awareness, to bring it into your conscious awareness and to make some, some different choices. 
you know, it might be simply a call to clear out your cupboard. Um, I've been feeling the declutter call again over the last couple of weeks and I often feel like I can't declutter anymore, but it's just interesting to feel the the energy of wanting to create some space, to let go of some things and even just shifting furniture around, just shifting the way um, it might be a particular room in your house. It might You might do it in every room, but just moving and shifting some energy and kind of creating a, a little bit of space. There is also a bit of a, a pull to be aware that there is timeline shifts available at the moment and I can feel that there are places that I can step into or that are ready for me to step into but I need to let go of some of the old still and so it might sound a bit strange but part of the process I I have been through is looking at what what I don't need anymore physically to create some physical space as well and who am I, you know, in that timeline, who my highest timeline, what does she need? What does she have and what is she embodying? So how can I start to feel that and be that in this moment? So you might be feeling the desire for new, the desire for change. You might not even know what it is that you're being pulled towards or, or, or called towards You know, you may just be in this state of knowing that there is something else, there's something more. You might be feeling like I'm really ready to step into my soul gifts or more into my purpose or what am I here for? Like what is my what am I what is my mission? What is my my call to service? And it might be in that that energy is what you're feeling as part of this collective cosmic energy and shift within our cosmic cosmic cycle and of course we have around all of that as I spoke about last week we had the shift with the astrological with the nodes we had the cancer new moon we had the venus retrograde and there's a multitude of things that are happening in and around everything else that we're experiencing on our planet at this time and so it can feel sometimes a bit too much, a bit overwhelming, a bit intense. It can also feel like I need to be doing something. Everybody's doing something, so I need to be doing something too. And one of the the most common conversations that I'm having, not just with my clients, but just even in conversation with anyone, is allowing things to move at a slower pace allowing things to unfold, being patient with the journey, understanding that we can know that we're on the path, we can know that there are things that are coming, but it will unfold in divine timing. It will unfold outside of our ego's time frame and timeline. You know, our human mind, our, our ego consciousness tends to want things straight away. And we have to also understand and appreciate that sometimes there's a journey to get to where we want to go. There are steps, there are experiences, there's lessons. There might just be pure pure space, pure time and space that needs to occur before something is ready to unfold. And it's so interesting because as I even reflect as I'm speaking on my own journey, there's plenty of times, believe me, plenty of times when I've been so frustrated at being slow, like the journey being slow, the ascension process being slow for me, you know, my gifts maybe not coming online as quickly as I would like them in the way I would like them. You know, I, other people are, are creating amazing offerings and doing things that I know I can do and I know that I'd love to do but at the time just hasn't been right for me and it just hasn't presented itself to do so. And as always, when I come into 
a moment of pause and a moment of, of reflection, I can feel exactly why that that has been the case and that I've needed to go through, particularly in the last six months of this year, there's a lot of experiences that I've needed to have to be able to, to really even understand what it is that I truly desire, that I tr- truly want to create. And what sparked this was, this is an extension really of the conversation that I've been having with you over the last few episodes. Something really interesting has landed since I've been talking about stepping into power, about using choice and being aware of having to make the choice and our choice being our power. And that's something that I felt strongly about for a really long time. And it's something that has come through from spirit many, many times, not just for me, but for clients as well. And I've always been aware of the the choice. And, and, you know, as I speak on this podcast about, I'm very conscious about who I'm choosing to be. And so what am I choosing to support that? But there was something really interesting that popped up. I was given an invitation in a group that I'm a part of, a channeling group, to bring a goal, to bring something that I wanted to manifest, to bring that in so that we could co-create and manifest, -manifest (laughs) co-manifest in a group space. And the... There was no framework other than let it be big, dream big, dream bigger than you would even dream normally, like go big. And I went through for the following days after receiving this invitation, I went through this huge (laughs) internal process of confliction, A, because There was a lot of material things that I wanted to manifest and they were not frivolous things. They were pretty run-of-the-mill things that I felt like I deserved and that I really wanted and that I've wanted for some time but not been in a financial position to, to, to purchase for myself. But then I had this inner conflict about actually desiring material things and that wasn't very spiritual of me. And, you know, I've been given this opportunity to dream big and, and, you know, I just want a new car. (laughs) And I had this huge internal battle around this and it's, and it was like then, okay, well, another invitation was, was uh, gifted to me of sit with your heart's desires. What does your heart truly desire? And when I sat with that, I could not discern what my heart truly decided, de- de- desired. I was jumping from one thing to the next. It felt like there were so many choices. How would I discern what was the best one to bring, you know, as my contribu- contribution to this, to this co-manifestation? So I did a little digging. I sat with my body, my body consciousness, my higher self, welcomed in the mind and the subconscious, my inner child, and I said, okay, well, what are we dealing with here? Supported myself with some muscle testing so that I could balance what my body wanted me to know with what my higher self and my inner child wanted me to know. And my beautiful 10-year-old self stepped forward. She who had a few years on my six-year-old self. And she felt like she had no choice. And in fact, she was resentful that she had no choice. And that was really astounding to me. So here I was in this version of myself that was remembering 
My voice was my power. The ability to choose is my power and to access, to own my power, to really own and claim my power and then be in the choosing of that, to then recognize there was this really frustrated, resentful, hurt, angry part of me, my 10-year-old self, who was in resentment of not having had a choice, of not feeling like she could choose, so she shut off. She shut off feeling into what her heart desired. She shut off to the possibility that she could choose. She almost didn't know how to make a choice because she hadn't been given that opportunity. And it was like a light bulb went off for me. And I wanted to share this because it was also a beautiful moment of recognizing the power of leading our children into their own hearts, leading them into their own inner discernment and their own ability to choose in alignment, in trust, in confidence and belief of their heart and their heart's desires. And that is something that I had almost unconsciously been doing with my own daughter at a point where I realised the power of making the choice, the, of making our own choice and making that choice in alignment to our heart and our truth. And I fully respect there's an age in which as children, you know, we, we can't and they can't necessarily have the luxury of making all of the choices for themselves. And you obviously need to discern yourself what is the time and place to suggest that but there are things that were empowering for my daughter to understand in terms of where she would put her time her energy her friendships one of the biggest moments of me allowing her to listen to her heart and to trust her heart was when she was choosing where she wanted to go to high school. She did not choose where I wanted her to go. But you know what is absolutely mind-blowing is that now we reflect on that and we laugh about it because there was no other choice. She made 100% the right choice for her and it has panned out and worked out beautifully for her and had it been the way that I wanted and if I had have pushed and fought for that her life would be very different right now her experience and more even even more past um, her experience in terms of her connection to her own choice and and being able to make the choice but her friendships her academic ability her connections the independence and the resilience, the confidence that has come from that experience too of following her heart, going to a school that she didn't know anybody at and she was fully prepared to do that. She stepped well out of her comfort zone to do that and she was rewarded almost immediately <laughs> because she landed and connected with a very solid group right from the beginning. And she has solid friendships now, three years later. And I wanted to take some time to extend on that and to share that as well, because in this moment of me meeting my 10-year-old self and feeling into this angry, frustrated, resentful little girl because she felt she didn't have a choice, so she wasn't going to make a choice, you know, you know, I still see her now as I'm, I'm sharing this with you, stamped foot, arms crossed, very frowny face and, and a bit like, no, I'm not having a bar of it. No, nope, I'm not even going to make a choice because it won't be the choice that I want. It won't be 
it won't be from my heart. It'll be made for me. It'll be taken away from me. And so there was this almost full circle moment too of being able to see how I've offered that to my daughter to bring my 10-year-old in and, and, and say, but see how this is possible now. See how we can do this. See how we are, you and I, now have this opportunity. We've been given this invitation to choose to choose something to manifest, to co-create, you know, as, as big as our imagination can, can bring up. Let's have some fun with this. Let's play with this. Let's do this together. Let me show you that you now have a choice. And I won't lie, it took a little convincing <laughs> for her to come around but this is the work, my friends, particularly with coming into some of these, these fears, these blocks, these resistances. It's going within and meeting yourself in those points. And nine times out of 10, you'll be meeting your inner child. And part of me wanting to share this as well is to see how interesting it can be in the unfolding as well. You know, we're on a bit of a journey here. We're riding this wave of coming into our power, owning our power, coming into this, this idea of being a sovereign being, of having the power to choose. It was all good and well in this example for me to know that, the, that I had a choice and that the choice was my power, but there was also this part of me that didn't want to make the choice. So there was creating a real push-pull and resistance, which until I was offered this invitation, I probably wouldn't have dived into as deeply. And this is the beautiful gift, isn't it? That there is experiences occurring all of the time. There's, an, uh, there's also a past version of me too that would have just gone with a material manifestation that would have just done something because I'm just going to show up and I'm going to bring something because I don't want to scratch too far below the surface. But that's not who I'm choosing to become. And I know that that's not who you are choosing to become because you wouldn't be on this journey with me. You wouldn't be asking the question. You wouldn't be seeking information. You wouldn't be looking for more, knowing that there is more. And as challenging as it feels or as confronting as it can feel, there is just so much power in just coming into connection with the deepest parts of your heart, diving into your own heart's desires. Because another part of me sharing this story with you is to offer you in these powerful, powerful energies we have, particularly as we move into this Lionsgate portal of the 8-8 energy, where we have the ability to manifest, to create to really make powerful shifts and transformation. We've been doing the tidy up work. We are doing the tidy up work. You know, that's what we're doing on this journey together. We're starting to dig in and we're starting to come under what is, what is there. Your stuff might be different to my stuff, but I want you still to tap into whatever that is for you. And I trust that there'll be a part of this that meets you at some point in your journey. And don't be stressed about listening to this and receiving this or being in this energy and it's September or it's April in 2024 or it's some point in the future. It could be 10 years from now. I don't know. <laughs> but whenever you're receiving this episode and the energy of this, trust that. You are in the portal of manifestation, of creativity, of being 
your own leader, your own guide, your own activator, creator, and put out your biggest desire. Put out whatever it is that you want to manifest. Write it down. Claim it, own it, become it. Because this episode is infused with the incredible Lionsgate portal energies for you to access when the time feels right for you and when this finds you. Because as I said at the start of the episode, it can be easy to feel like we are playing catch up or we're trying to squeeze something in in a certain time or we need to do this then or there's not enough time. There's never enough time to do all of these things. And spirit is very clearly just having me say to you now, that this energy, the portal energy, can be accessed actually at any time. At any time. The most important thing is that you become aware of this ability to harness the energies, to use with your own life force energy, to use with the the power of your sovereignty, of your divinity, your, and your physical form to create this heaven on earth, to create your reality. So I want to leave that with you. I don't even feel like we need any other type of activation today. That was an activation. This whole episode is an activation. And I'm so grateful to have you on this journey with me and to be walking this path with me as I'm walking the path with you. And if you feel like you would like some support to clear the the old, to see what the patterns are, if there is emotional beliefs, if there is uh, emotion that is rising in you, if there's a pattern that keeps reoccurring, let's jump in a session together and let's see how we can support you to clear that out, to create the space for you to step in and manifest your magic, to use your power as a creator to manifest your reality, to springboard out of the portal energies here and into your highest timeline. I'm going to link in the show notes. There is a kind of preparatory, I can never say that word, an, an energy transmission, an attunement that I was guided to create in preparation for the 8A portal. And so if you feel resonance with this episode, I would highly recommend that you go and receive that. Spirit has said that that was part one of three, which will culminate in the third one being on the 8-8 energies. And that will support you to step into your own creator being, your own sovereignty, to create, to manifest your reality in your highest timeline to assist your ascension, to use this accelerated energy to accelerate your ascension, to create whatever it is that you desire. Thank you, my friends. Again, I am sending you so much love from the bottom of my heart. 
where the light, the love, the divinity within me honors the light, the love, the divinity within you. Namaste. Namaste.